Hi, my name is James Earl, and today we're going to be talking about edit distance. Edit distance is a measure of how similar two strings are, and it's used in programs like Google Search Engine or Spell Check in your favorite word processor. So let's dive in. So when we're talking about edit distance, what we're really trying to do is transform one string A into another string B. Now A is of length n, and B is of length m. But because of this, we can actually get the edit distance between any two strings. When we're trying to transform A to B, we have three operations, being deletion, insertion, and substitution. Now for our purposes, we're going to give all of these operations a cost of 1. But there is a fourth operation, copying. But we're going to give this operation a cost of 0. And that's because copying is the same as substitution, it's just copying only occurs when two letters are the same. So let's try to walk through an example. Let's try to transform the word kitten into the word knitting. Before we jump in, we can see that there's many common characters between both of these words. First and foremost being the first N in knitting. So let's insert that N into kitten. Now we're at a cost of one. What we can do next is continue working left through our original string and find where it differs from the opposing string. In this case, after ITT, which is a common sequence in both, we can see that the letter E is different from the letter I in knitting. But there is a commonality, and that is both of them are followed by an N. So we can actually just replace the E with an I. So now our second operation is going to be a substitution. But now we can see that we're pretty close. And the final operation is sort of yelling at us because we can see that knitten, which is the word we have right now in the middle of the screen, is only one letter away from knitting. And that is to just append the G at the end of the string. So now we've seen after these three operations that the distance between kitten and knitting is three. Now we don't know if this is an optimal distance or not, and that's mainly because we just did this problem off the top of our heads. What were we to do if we're trying to study something more complex, such as DNA sequences? There's simply no way we would be able to do this. So how can we determine the distance? Well, a naive approach would tell us that we can try every combination of every distance until we achieve the result. But this is exponential, so now we can check if this edit distance problem is eligible for a dynamic programming solution. To do this, we need to show that the edit distance problem contains the property of optimal substructure. And this can be done using a proof by contradiction. But before we do that, let's define a few things first. Let's let C of A and B at I and J equal the minimum cost of transforming the first J characters of A into the first i characters of b. Let's also define d of a and b to be the distance from a to b. Therefore it can be seen that the distance from a to b is equal to the cost of a and b at n and m, where n is the length of a and m is the length of b. We can also define s as a series of operations from 1 to k that transforms a to b. Now let's assume that this k operations transforms a to b optimally. This lets us know that the cost of this sequence is going to be equal to the distance from a to b. So now let's consider some sequence i for s of 1 to s of i being the first i operations in our s of k. We can also just define z of i being the string after s of i operations have been performed on a as it's being transformed to b. So to make that clear what z really is, you can see that z0 will be equal to a because we've made no changes, and zk will be equal to b because we've performed all k operations, and now a will have been transformed into b. So let's take a look at the theorem we're trying to show. If the cost of s at i is equal to the distance from a to z i, then the cost of s at i minus 1 is equal to the distance from a to z at i minus 1. Let's think about what that really means. If the cost of performing the i operations is equal to the distance from a to z i, 
then of course the cost from s at i minus one, or performing the s at i minus one operations, will be equal to the distance from our original string a to our new string z at i minus one. This is the definition of our optimal substructure, because any given string is comprised of its substring's optimal distance, and that string is comprised of its substring's optimal distance, and so on and so on until we're at a single character. So let's take a look at the two cases that exist when we're trying to show that this theorem is true. So let's take a look at the first case that exists when we're trying to prove this theorem. The cost of s at i minus 1 is less than the distance from a to z at i minus 1. What this is saying is that there's some sequence of operations that can give us a cost less than the distance from a to z at i minus 1. But if this sequence existed, we could just transform a to z at i minus 1 using this sequence and we'll get a lower cost. But this contradicts the assumption that these sequences perform optimally. So now for this case, we're done. So now let's consider the second case in this proof where the cost of s at i minus 1 operations is greater than the distance from a to z at i minus 1. Now this proof gets a little bit hairier than the last one, so try to stay with me. If this sequence costs more than the distance, we can replace it with some other sequence, s prime, that transforms a to z at i minus 1 at the cost of the distance from a to z at i minus 1, as opposed to a more expensive sequence. So now, we can append some operation s at i, to s prime, which transforms a to b at cost s prime union s at i. So if we do a little bit of math, we can see that the cost of s prime union s i is equal to the distance from a to z at i minus 1 plus the cost of s at i. This is our previous assumption. So now we can see that this is going to be strictly less than the cost of s at i minus 1, our old sequence, plus this new operation. So now we know that this is the cost of s at i, but if this is the cost of s at i, it equals the distance from a to z i. And this implies that the distance from a to z i is not the distance between a and z i, because we assume the cost of s prime union s i transforms a to b. Thus, a contradiction has been formed, and the optimal substructure exists. So now that we've shown that optimal substructure exists, we can try to derive the recursive formula and use it to fill in the table to the right, so that when we're done, the optimal cost will be in the bottom right corner. Now, if we keep track of all the operations we perform while we're doing this calculation, we can trace back from the bottom right corner to the top left, and that will give us the optimal sequence of operations to transform kitten into knitting. So let's take a look at the base case for the recursive formula. Now what we need to try to do is fill in the first column and the first row. Notice in the top left that I've added an extra column and row to represent empty characters. So to transform kitten into an empty character requires nothing but a sequence of deletions, and to transform an empty character into the word knitting requires nothing but a sequence of insertions. This gives us the two operations on our left, being the base case for our recursive formula, where c at i and 0 is equal to i times the cost of a deletion, or c at 0 and j is equal to j times the cost of an insertion. This means we perform j insertions, or i deletions, to fill in the first column and the first row. So let's do that. Notice that I've labeled every cell in the table with its associated cost and action. So now let's take a look at the rest of the recurrence. c at i and j, where i and j are indices in the table, is equal to the cheapest operation we want to perform next, be it deletion, insertion, substitution, or copying. Notice that each of these also has a directional change based on indices in the table, where deletion can be seen as a shift downwards, substitution and copying can be seen as a diagonal shift, and an insertion can be seen as a shift to the right. So given our example, the cheapest operation would actually be a copy at a cost of zero, which is kind of intuitive when you think about it because the letter K equals the letter K. So instead of making any insertions or deletions, which cost one, we can make a shift from c at i minus 1 to j at i minus 1 plus the cost of a copy, which is 0. And now we've copied the letter k to the letter k. We can see that the rest of the operations are then just going to be insertions, because this can be seen as changing the letter k into the word knitting. So our first operation would be a copy, and the remainder would all be insertions. 
Looking at the next empty cell in the table, we can try to decipher which is going to be the cheapest operation. And we can see that the nearest and cheapest adjacent value is 0 directly above us. So that tells us that a deletion is our next operation. So we add that to our table. Looking at the next cell to the right, we can see we're transforming ki to kn. We can see that although i is not equal to n, we can perform a single substitution coming from the 0 diagonally. Now we have a cost of 1 and a substitution. Now at our next level, we can see that we have i and i. So although we could come directly from the left or diagonally with a substitution, because i and i are the same character, we can use a copy. Now we still have a value of 1, but the remainder of the operations performed on this row would all be insertions. So I'm going to fill in the rest of this table now, but feel free to pause and take a look before you move on. As you can see, we've come up with an optimal cost of 3. Now this coincides with the example we did earlier just off the top of our heads, so we know that our cost was in fact optimal. But as with many other dynamic programming solutions, we don't know the path. We don't know the optimal series of operations that can be performed to transform kitten into knitting. But that's where tracing all of our operations comes in handy. So although there can exist multiple optimal paths, we're going to start in the bottom right corner and we're going to see what the optimal path in this example is. So first, we have an insertion. Now we know because this is an insertion, we go one cell to the left. This gives us a copy. Because this is a copy, we go up and to the left. Now we have a substitution, we go up and to the left. A copy, up and to the left. A copy, up and to the left. A copy, up and to the left. And now we have an insertion, so we strictly go to the left, and then we have one more copy, and we go up and to the left. So this gives us the appropriate sequence of moves to transform kitten into knitting, if you follow them backwards. And now we're done. Thanks to our dynamic programming solution, we operate in big O m of n time, where m and n are the lengths of the two strings. So thank you for watching this video. Please like and favorite, and check out our other videos on dynamic programming.